Imagine waking up one morning and making a single decision. Today, you will eat only once. No comforting scent of breakfast drifting through the house. No midday bite to keep you going. No familiar ritual of dinner as the sun goes down. Just the quiet, unfamiliar emptiness of a stomach waiting almost as if your body is asking you why. At first glance, it sounds extreme, maybe even reckless. But the truth is softer, deeper, beneath that first wave of hunger isn't just discomfort. It's a signal from a biological rhythm far older than modern life itself, a rhythm we've forgotten. And here's the surprising part. Your body isn't panicking the way your mind is. Sometimes, the moment you think you're getting weaker is exactly when something ancient and powerful inside you is beginning to wake up. We grow up believing that hunger is a warning sign, a red light flashing in the mind, eat now or something bad will happen. But what if that alarm isn't truth, just habit? Most of us don't eat because our bodies demand it, we eat because the clock tells us to, because it's breakfast time, because everyone else is eating, because routine whispers louder than biology. Yet deep beneath those routines lies a very different story. Our ancestors didn't graze through the day. They moved, searched, built, hunted often for long stretches without a single bite. Their bodies thrived on unpredictability, not abundance. And even now, that ancient rhythm still lives inside you, quiet but intact, waiting for a moment like this. When you skip your usual meals, you're not just breaking a habit. You're stepping back into a biological pattern, far older than civilization, a pattern your body remembers, even if you don't. The first hours without food feel like a rebellion happening inside you. Your stomach tightens. Your thoughts drift toward the fridge. A strange restlessness stirs not true hunger, but the body sounding an ancient alarm. This is ghrelin at work, the hunger hormone rising sharply like a siren. It rushes through your bloodstream, knocking on the brain's door, shouting, Find food now! Oh! It's a protective reflex, a survival mechanism forged in a world where missing a meal could mean missing a chance to stay alive. And almost everyone who tries eating once a day experiences this moment, that subtle wave of panic, that instinctive urge to fix the discomfort immediately. But here's the twist. Ghrelin is loud, but it's impatient. If you don't answer its call right away, something unexpected happens. The noise begins to fade. Your body realizes the crisis it predicted isn't actually happening. And that's when a very different transformation begins. And then something almost unbelievable happens. The hunger you were so sure would keep rising doesn't. It softens. It quiets. It slips into the background like a storm that changed its mind. This is the moment when your body stops reacting out of habit and starts responding out of intelligence. The dopamine-driven cravings tied to routine begin to lose their grip, and what remains is real hunger, the kind your ancestors felt only when fuel was truly needed. As your hormones stabilize and your blood sugar evens out, a subtle clarity emerges not a rush, not adrenaline, but a cleaner kind of focus that feels almost evolutionary. Many Americans who experiment with intermittent fasting describe this same shift, that strange moment when the noise shuts off and the mind finally feels awake. It's as if your biology is whispering, now we can begin. As the hours stretch on, your body realizes it can't rely on the quick fuel it usually grabs. The stored glucose that once powered every step is fading, and for the first time in a long time, your system is forced to tap into something deeper. This is metabolic switching, the quiet moment when your body stops waiting for external fuel and turns inward to burn stored fat. It's not starvation, it's strategy, a biological upgrade built into your DNA. Your insulin levels begin to drop, inflammation starts to calm, and your cells rediscover the flexibility they were designed to have. Many people in the U.S. who try intermittent fasting notice something unexpected here. Instead of crashing, they actually feel lighter, less bloated, more steady. It's the first sign that your body isn't shutting down. It's reorganizing, choosing a cleaner, more stable source of energy. And from here, things only get more interesting. As your body settles into this new rhythm, something remarkable unfolds at the cellular level. Your mitochondria, the tiny power plants inside each cell, begin operating with a different kind of precision. 
Deprived of the constant sugar drip they're used to, they shift toward fat oxidation, producing a cleaner, steadier energy that doesn't spike or crash. It's the early footprint of ketosis, a metabolic state many Americans now seek because of how balanced and mentally sharp it feels. People often describe this phase as if someone quietly upgraded their internal battery. No jitters, no brain fog, just a smooth, controlled current running through the body. And the surprising part is how natural it feels, like a system returning to the fuel source it always preferred. This isn't your body weakening, it's refining, tuning itself into a high-efficiency mode you may not have experienced in years. And deeper inside, an even more astonishing process is waiting. When the body settles fully into its fat-burning rhythm, a silent revolution begins beneath the surface. This is autophagy, the cellular housekeeping process that scientists now link to longevity, metabolic health, and even reduced risk of age-related disease. Imagine millions of microscopic workers moving through your body, identifying damaged proteins, misfolded structures, and tired organelles, then breaking them down so your cells can rebuild stronger versions of themselves. It's not dramatic on the outside, but internally, it's one of the most powerful upgrades your biology can perform. Japanese researcher Yoshinori Osumi won the Nobel Prize in 2016 for uncovering this mechanism. And for good reason, when autophagy switches on, your body stops simply surviving and starts repairing. Many people practicing intermittent fasting in the U.S. describe this stage as a turning point when they feel lighter, clearer, more balanced, not because they're eating less, but because their cells are finally getting a chance to reset and the organ that benefits most from this reset is the one you depend on every second, your brain. As your cells repair themselves, the brain begins its own transformation. Fasting triggers an increase in BDNF, a powerful protein that supports neuroplasticity, the brain's ability to grow, adapt, and strengthen neural pathways. Think of BDNF as a kind of fertilizer for your neurons, encouraging them to fire more efficiently and communicate more clearly. Many Americans who begin intermittent fasting report a surprising shift here. Thoughts feel sharper, emotions steadier, and that familiar mental fog seems to dissolve. It's not adrenaline or hype. It's a quieter, deeper clarity born from stability instead of sugar. When insulin levels stay low and energy remains clean, your brain stops chasing the highs and lows of constant snacking and starts operating from a more grounded baseline. For some people, this feels like calm confidence. For others, it feels like a mind finally unplugged from chaos. But even this clarity comes with a responsibility because not everybody responds the same way. For all its benefits, fasting isn't a universal miracle. Every body carries its own history, its own metabolism, its own delicate chemistry, and when the eating window shrinks too much, trade-offs begin to appear. Some people experience low blood pressure, dizziness, or irritability as their systems adapt. Women in particular may notice shifts in menstrual cycles or energy levels because reproductive hormones are deeply tied to nutrient availability. And then there's the risk of nutrient deficiency trying to pack a full day's worth of protein, vitamins, and minerals into a single meal can be challenging if you're not intentional. That's why many nutritionists in the U.S. warn that OMAD works best when the meal is rich in whole foods, healthy fats, lean proteins, and enough electrolytes to keep the body stable. Fasting is a powerful tool, but it is still just a tool. It can sharpen you or it can strain you, depending on how you wield it. And understanding this balance opens the door to the most fascinating part of all, what fasting means for longevity. As researchers began studying fasting more closely, they noticed a pattern. The same biological shifts that improve short-term energy also support long-term longevity. When digestion quiets down, the body finally has time to focus on cellular preservation, repairing damage that would otherwise accumulate with age. Studies from the National Institute on Aging show that animals placed under controlled caloric restriction live longer, with stronger mitochondria, lower inflammation, and fewer signs of metabolic decline. Human data echoes the trend. When insulin sensitivity improves and oxidative stress drops, the systems responsible for aging begin to slow their descent. 
It's not about becoming immortal, it's about aging slower, staying sharper, and preserving vitality for more years than you thought possible. Many Americans exploring intermittent fasting say this realization changes everything. It's not just about looking better or losing weight, it's about giving your body room to maintain itself. And that idea isn't new, it's ancient. Long before modern science had words like autophagy or metabolic switch, cultures around the world were already practicing forms of fasting for clarity, discipline, and renewal. From early Greek philosophers to spiritual traditions across Egypt, India, and Japan, people believed that stepping away from food sharpened the mind and strengthened the spirit. They didn't measure ketones or track insulin, they simply trusted the rhythm their bodies responded to. And that rhythm is still alive in you. In a world of constant abundance, we've grown disconnected from the cycles that shaped human biology for thousands of years. Many Americans describe their first successful fast not as a physical challenge, but as a return, a reconnection to something older, simpler, more grounded. It's a reminder that fasting isn't a trend. It's a memory, a biological echo from a time when our bodies and our instincts moved in perfect agreement. And once you feel that reconnection, the final realization becomes impossible to ignore. If your body could speak after a full day without eating, it wouldn't beg or plead the way your mind imagines. It would say, quietly but unmistakably, thank you. Thank you for the break from constant digestion. Thank you for the chance to repair, to clean, to realign. Thank you for letting the noise settle long enough for clarity to rise. Fasting isn't about punishment or control, it's about rediscovering a balance that modern life slowly pushed aside. Your body was built to handle hunger, to adapt, to shift into states that protect you rather than weaken you. And when you give it space, it responds with resilience, improved metabolic health, steadier energy, a mind that feels more grounded. If this journey made you rethink the way you view hunger, consider exploring deeper. Share your experience, your curiosity, or your doubts. And if you're ready for the next step, the science only gets more fascinating from here.